Hi, I'm Susan Keefe from Rhubarb and Cod, and today I'm making rhubarb vanilla floats. To me, floats are the unsung heroes of the frozen dessert world. They just don't get the attention they deserve. Perhaps it's their high sugar content or their fairly retro status, but I feel like I see them less and less. So allow me to voice my ardent support for the float and put forward a slightly less sugarific homespun version. Now I'm going to level with you. This recipe came out of a particularly devastating cake fail that involved poached rhubarb. But the discovery of rhubarb vanilla syrup made the ego-crushing defeat totally worth it. Sort of. The rhubarb vanilla syrup used in this recipe tastes like a high-end cream soda. So if you're not interested in turning your own ice cream, you could totally just make the rhubarb vanilla soda and call it a day. But if you're a dessert completist, stick around for the lemon-scented ricotta ice cream, which incidentally is a great recipe in its own right. But before I get ahead of myself, let's get this syrup going. Start by cutting one pound of fresh rhubarb into evenly sized batons and set them aside. Next, grab a good sized piece of ginger and cut four medallions off of it. Take a vanilla bean and split it down the center. Using the dull side of a knife, scrape out the caviar and transfer it to a small bowl and set aside. In a large skillet, pour one cup of water and one cup of sugar. Add the ginger, the vanilla bean caviar and pod and bring it to a gentle simmer. Add the rhubarb and evenly disperse it across the surface of the water. Bring the mixture up to a boil, then reduce to a simmer. Simmer for seven to 10 minutes, flipping the rhubarb every so often. Once the rhubarb is soft enough to be easily pierced by a knife, take it off of the heat and strain it through a fine mesh strainer. Add a teaspoon of orange blossom water and let cool on the counter before transferring to the fridge to cool completely talking about the leftover rhubarb and I said you can save it from pies, tarts, or muffins. Keep it away. That's not what I mean. That's not what I'm telling you to do. As far as the leftover rhubarb goes, you can save it for your pies, tarts, and muffins. Don't save them from them though. Whatever you choose, be sure to remove the vanilla bean pot. We're gonna get a little extra mileage out of that. With the syrup taken care of, now it's time to tackle the ice cream. Now, if you're not interested in making your own ice cream or you don't have an ice cream maker, you can totally proceed with store-bought ice cream. With the store-bought stuff. Stuff from the store. Stuff you purchased. Stuff you got in exchange for money. I wrote store-bought stuff and now I'm feeling like that's a weird thing to say. The store-bought stuff. With the store-bought stuff. Which is what I wrote. <laughs> not just a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> you okay. <laughs> okay, I'll read what you wrote. Yeah, I'll do that. Now, if you're not interested in making your own ice cream or you don't own an ice cream maker, you can keep going with the store-bought stuff. Although this is a lemon-scented ricotta ice cream, it starts out like any other ice cream by separating a whole whack of eggs. Five, to be exact. Separate the yolks and whites from five eggs. We're after the yolks for this recipe, so store the whites for a future pavlova, a round of whiskey sours, or a batch of macaron. Lightly beat the yolks and set aside. In a small saucepan, pour a cup of milk. I use 2%. Add a half a cup of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and the zest of half a lemon. Remember that vanilla bean pod we rescued? We're going to add it as well. Gently heat the mixture over a medium low heat until the sugar dissolves and the steam gathers on the surface of the milk. Reduce the heat to low and ladle some of the milk mixture into the egg yolks while whisking constantly to temper the eggs. Once the eggs are tempered, pour the egg mixture into the saucepan and continue to cook gently until the mixture is thick enough to coat the back of a spoon. Pour the custard through a fine mesh strainer into a container and let cool on the counter before transferring to the fridge. Let chill for at least one hour. While the custard is chilling, let's bring the ricotta into this. Place 475 grams of full fat ricotta in a large food processor. Add a quarter cup of honey and blitz until smooth. Transfer the mixture to a bowl, cover, and chill for one hour. Once everything has had a chance to chill, place the ricotta mixture in a large container with a spout. Add the custard and stir to combine. Pour the mixture into an ice cream maker and churn for 20 minutes or until the ice cream resembles soft serve. I churned mine a little too long, so it was practically ice cream at this point. Transfer the ice cream to a chilled loaf pan and cover. Freeze for at least six hours or overnight. When you're ready to make the float, load a pitcher up with ice and add half a cup of rhubarb vanilla syrup. Pour in two cups of chilled sparkling water and stir to combine. 
Place three scoops of lemon-scented ricotta ice cream in a chilled Collins glass and pour the rhubarb vanilla soda over top. Garnish with a lemon slice, fresh mint, and a skewer of bourbon-soaked cherries. And that's it, rhubarb vanilla floats, a gourmet take on a diner classic. I hope you give this one a shot, and if you do give it a go, let me know how it went in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for cooking with me. I'll see you all next time.